Hey everyone, we're back at the boat again this week and I thought I would give you guys a tour of my 1978 Tanzer 26. The Tanzer 26 is a Canadian sailboat. Designed by Johan Tanzer, they were 960 built in the 10 year production run. They're the perfect balance between a well-performing race boat and a comfortable pocket cruiser. Hey, I'm Taylor. I've been leading an alternative lifestyle for the last two years. From living in a van to living on a sailboat. With my guitar by my side along the way. Subscribe to follow me along this wild adventure that I call life. All right, welcome aboard. So starting up here on the bow, we have our anchor compartment that obviously holds the anchor. I don't have a windlass, so it's pulling up the anchor by hand using good old fashioned muscle power. Um, and then I've got a hank on jib sail. So uh, yeah, that pretty much sums up the bow here. Let's move back. So next up, we've got our forward hatch. And this opens up into the V-berth. So it's great to be able to sleep there at night. You get lots of airflow and everything. And it does have a vent here that pops open. Coming aft a little bit to the mast, we've got the main sail. Um, so the main sail has to be raised from the mast. My lines don't run back to the cockpit. Um, it'd be a little bit easier for solo sailing if they did but this is just what I got and it works. Now back into the cockpit. We've got actually quite a lot of room back here for being only a 26 foot boat. Um, my family, like five people were all sitting here and we were all really comfortable. Um, I've got a tiller here. And a 9.9 .9 horsepower outboard motor. The boarding ladder on the back here that you can use to get back on the boat after you jump in and everything. For our fuel tank, simple, super easy, you can just fill it up with a jerry can and then water fills up here. My main sheet traveler is located on the bridge deck and my Genoa sheet travelers are located on the side tow rails. Although there are the mounts for the tiller autopilot, I don't actually have one. On the starboard side, there's a storage locker where I keep all of my fenders, extra lines, and life jackets. Now you might notice the lack of instruments here. That's because we don't really have any. We have the depth meter down here, which is it, and it doesn't even work. Um, so we're winging it. <laughs> now that we've covered mostly everything outside, let's go on down inside. Fun fact, Tanzer 26 hull number 226 sailed across the Atlantic twice including one passage from New York to Lorient, France in 29 days. On the inside, I'm gonna work aft forward. So let's start with the galley. So directly uh, starboard of the companionway here, we've got our beautiful galley and for how small a boat it is, again, they make a great use of space. Um, we've got a little sink here. It's just a hand pump for our, from our fresh water and an old fashioned ice box that I haven't really used much. Um, it's great when you're going out for day sales and stuff to be able to put stuff in there and not have to worry about it. But as far as like a full time, if you're living aboard refrigeration system, it does not really work the best. Just got a little camping propane stove here, one burner. It does well for what we need on the boat and plenty of room for storage and everything else under here. Underneath the sink, I just keep, you know, like chemicals, all that kind of stuff. And there's even more storage under here. 
directly behind the companionway stairs is two little storage areas here and here. And then way back underneath is a sail compartment. So that's where I keep all the sail bags and everything nice and tidy under there. It doesn't get in the way. And this boat can comfortably sleep five people. Um, this is the double berth that technically sleeps two people. Um, but again, underneath there is kind of more of a storage area. Directly port of the companionway, we've got the VHF radio, our communication systems and electronics, as well as the um, control panel and two 12 volt ports that we can use to charge our phone and stuff while we're not connected to the 120 volt shore power. Underneath each of the settees is a small amount of room for storage. We've got wonderful handholds built in all along the roof, and I can stand up in here. So much like my camper van, which if you haven't seen my camper van tour video yet, that link should be popping up soon. So definitely check that out after this. The height clearance in here is five foot nine, and I'm only five foot five, so I've got plenty of room to stand up in here, and it's perfect for me. The beam of the boat is eight foot eight, and my draft is three foot 10 inches. Now with such a small space, everything kind of have to serve multiple purposes. So the beds are also the couch and the dining room. So this table can fold down here and fold out to be a dining table available for both sides. It does take up a lot of room though, so it's great that it can fold up and store perfectly here. is where things start to get a little bit more squishy as far as the space. Uh, in the head here we've got just a portable toilet um, so I don't have a pump out I have to manually take the toilet and go and dump it and then behind the door there is some closet space and you can close this off to have privacy to divide the two cabins between the main cabin and the v-berth. <laughs> Last but not least we've got the v-berth. Uh, the v-berth is pretty roomy you can sleep too and there's storage running along each side, as well as a 120 volt plug-in outlet, which is great. There's also another storage hatch underneath the bed. And like I mentioned earlier, you can see the wonderful hatch where you can lay here and just look out at the stars. And yeah, I think that pretty much concludes the boat tour from here. Thank you guys so much for watching. To give you some idea of my history with the boat, I purchased it in May of 2019 and lived aboard it all last summer. Now, after having lived on Sailing Doodle's 56-foot catch, I've certainly learned a lot, and I'm continuing to learn more as I progress. I've realized how some things are a bit more challenging on a smaller boat, but there are also many great benefits as well. Though I don't think that this boat would be suitable as a full-time live-aboard blue water boat. That being said, should I choose to embark on cruising the Caribbean on my own vessel one day, I would definitely need an upgrade. And as always, a big thank you to my patrons who make this channel possible. You're the ones who keep the boat floating and the wheels turning. For those of you who want to support me and are not too keen on Patreon, I've also created a new Amazon wishlist. The link is in the description below.